You know this midrash about God trying to give the Torah away? God went to one group, the children of Esau, and said, here's my Torah with all of its laws. And they said, we're good. No, thank you. God went to a second group, the children of Ishmael. And the people said, uh, look, God, oh, God said, look, it's not just laws. It's also stories and wisdom. And they said, no, thank you. <laughs> it's going to be a hard pass from us. God went to a third group of people and the same thing happened again. No one would accept the Torah. Then God came to us, the Israelites, a tiny, sad, schlocky group of stiff-necked misfits just recovering from slavery. God said, hey, <laughs> you of all people will surely want my Torah. To which the Israelites said, eh, not so much. Then God got tricky. God picked up Mount Sinai itself, flipped it over, hovered it over the Israelites' head. Under the shadow of that mountain, God then said to the people, will you accept my Torah? And only then did we say yes. That's how we became what this week's Torah portion calls Am Segula, the chosen people. What do you think about the concept of chosenness? Do you think the Jews have a special purpose in our world? A special relationship with God? Is it superior to all other peoples? Is our tradition the right path? Or is it just one of many right paths in the world that all lead to the same end? Is Judaism better than other religions? Are the Jewish people somehow better than other people? Do we, as this week's Parsha states, have a special relationship with God, unlike and better than the relationships others have with God? All of these questions come from this tiny phrase, Am Segula. If you are uncomfortable with chosenness, you are in good company. Many, many, many liberal Jews have a kind of religious, religious whiplash when we talk about chosenness. It can be cringeworthy. For many, it's uncomfortable at the least and even unethical at the most to say that Jews are somehow separate, different, and even more special than other peoples in the world. We tend to value fitting into larger culture. We've largely discarded with the outward trappings of Jewish identity long ago. No kipot in public, no walking down the street in the talis, on Shabbat morning, no pass. So the concept of being different, let alone better than other groups, of course, doesn't sit well with us. Second, of course, we value equality and egalitarianism. We would never rank one people above another. Many of us have literally been marching in the street to support the value that all humans are created equal regardless of race, ethnicity, or religion. We know this from our tradition. You shall have one law for the stranger and the citizen alike, Torah teaches. We also cringe at the idea of chosenness because in our liberal world, we of course frequently marry people from other faiths and almost all of us, including myself, have extended family members of other religions. Can we really look into the eyes of a loved one and claim our tradition is superior to theirs? But chosenness is still there. <laughs> in Torah and also very much in the zeitgeist of Judaism. So what do we do with it? There are two main ways that people like to take the teeth out of this argument. Honestly, I don't really like either of them. The first is to just flat out reject it. As many Jews have, and as many of you at this service might. Like many things in Torah, simply don't believe it. Don't focus on it. Don't struggle with it. Just ignore it. Pretend it's not there. That's option one. Option two, turn it into an everybody gets a trophy kind of moment. It's like saying, yes, Jews have a relationship with God, but other groups also have a relationship with God. Just for participating in the God conversation at all, everyone gets the exact same trophy. As I said, I'm not really a fan of either of those approaches. I don't think they're intellectually serious. I believe that if something is difficult, it's better to sit with it and struggle with it, process it, and challenge your own beliefs. Really consider another point of view. 
that's better than just dismissing it. Despite all of the problems with Am Segula, and there are many, I like it. Of course I do, for many reasons. And tonight I'm going to share two of them. First, in Hebrew, as I said, the term chosen people is Am Segula. We are translating it as chosen people. We could also translate it as treasured people, or even better, precious people. And I do think the Jewish people are precious. We are vulnerable and need to be handled with great care. There are 2.4 billion Christians in the world. There are 1.9 billion Muslims in the world and about 14 million Jews. We make up less than 0.2% of the world population, a rounding error, a statistical insignificance. We're a microscopic group of people diffused all over the world. Perpetuating us is not easy work, believe me. <laughs> like all things that are precious, we need to be cared for carefully, tended to, and nurtured. I believe our customs are sacred and beautiful. I believe they are worthy of being preserved thoughtfully and with tenderness. Two, the idea of chosenness to me also corresponds to the idea of responsibility. If you are chosen for something, you are obligated to act to live up to that choice. To me, the question is not necessarily how Jews compare to other nations. The question is, what were we chosen for? If Jews are chosen to be a moral people, then I challenge us to be moral. If Jews are chosen to guard and protect Torah, then we are obligated to do it. If we are chosen to fight for justice and to be a light unto the nations, then I say we need to push ourselves to do just that. Torah doesn't say Jews are perfect. It's quite the contrary, in fact. But it does say we need to strive to be better. Maybe for this Shabbat, allow yourself to remove that hierarchical overlay of chosenness and consider what else it could mean to be an Am Segula of precious people. Shabbat Shalom.